So a couple of years ago, uh, I was actually helping a buddy that owns a tree service uh, get rid of some eucalyptus rounds from a, the house next door. He knew I burned firewood, and so he called and asked, or texted and asked if I could you know, come get rid of the stuff. And uh, it's a beautiful place, and we were sitting there taking lunch and overlooking the lot next door. And I remember telling him, like, this would be the coolest place in the world to build a huge custom dream home. It's a it's a gorgeous lot. Uh, it overlooks the ocean, and it's it's just everything you'd want in like a, a, a location for building a crazy house. Like you could never overbuild on this lot. And then let's remark out this real quick because this was the to get this 45, they did four feet and four feet. So from where this corner at, it was four feet that way and four feet that way. My, my company's vision has, has definitely morphed over the last few years. In the beginning, you don't think as much about, or I didn't think as much about what the vision of the company is at the very beginning. You're just trying to make payroll and you're trying to keep the guys busy and, and you don't think quite as much of the bigger picture. Um, so as I got into the flow of things, uh, I, I realized that I, I wanted to build specific things. I loved the unique projects. I loved the people that had uh, the weird ideas that other people didn't agree with or other people thought were you know, a waste of money or just uh, not worth the resources to go build something that, that far off and unique. So as we got into the flow of things, we realized like that's kind of a niche that we would love to chase after a little bit if possible is to, to build the houses that are, that are big and weird and have interesting architectural features that you don't really see around. And uh, I think that plays a, a huge role in the work that we look for and a, a huge role in uh, how we sort of pick our clients or, or look for them. When you hear about a project of this magnitude and of, of this level of uniqueness, you, of course you're gonna be excited and of course you're going to just think of all the possibilities with it. This one in particular was special because you could tell that the owner right off the bat, just from 10 seconds of looking at the plans, that they were going for the, the go big or go home mentality. They had huge, huge glass windows, spiral staircase up to an electric hatch that opens up to a roof deck, and the location of it is, is obviously one of a kind, and you could tell that they really didn't want a cookie cutter build you know, on the edge of a cliff looking over the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so this is just, we have a laser there that sends like a perfect X axis. So then this is just a receiver and it'll tell us within, within like a sixteenth of an inch that, um, where it's at. So that we can get everything perfectly level without having to pull like strings and put, you know, like string levels and anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Makes this a lot easier. My employees, they, they don't fit into boxes really well. They are incredibly detail oriented, so they can do you know mahogany finish trim, but at the same time they can tackle things that are, are much less less tight tolerances. They can do concrete work and they can do you know rough framing, and they know how to how to dial it from one to the other, and not take cabinetry level tolerances into you know rough framing where you might you know, give or take a, an eighth or sixteenth of an inch to make the thing go faster and, and understanding that there's different acceptable tolerances for different things. They're all in incredibly uh, efficient and detail oriented. They're mechanically inclined and they, they want to understand what they're doing and why they're doing it. They, they want to understand their, their role in, in the big picture. But at the same time, they've matured to where they don't have to get locked up in trying to figure that out before they can proceed. That's, that's something that happens a lot with, I think, green guys, is that they'll be asked to do something simple. Hey, go make a thousand of this cut, please. See you in four hours. And they'll want to say, well, where is it gonna go? And what's it gonna do? And what if we did this? And what if we did that? Which is all great, you gotta ask the questions. But uh, you also have to have that balance of 
knowing that if you don't understand the full picture of what's going on, then you can still proceed according to what the boss said to do and keep rolling with it. My guys have a great ability to know when there's, there's things that need to be understood so they can put their own brains to it and their own minds to it and also know, you know that's not my, in my wheelhouse to know exactly what we're doing eight steps from now. So I'm just gonna do this task and make sure that whatever I'm doing, I'm doing right. 10, we only got three. It, no, it sounds like he's spinning up. He doesn't sound like he's driving, that's spinning up. Hello, we're over here. Damn it. comes through the woods. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless, unless that's him spinning his tires. This tree is Unless that's him spinning his tires. No, he's driving now. Yeah. It did sound like he was. <laughs> yeah. Just, all right, this must up. be the right, address. Here we go. <laughs> all right. Throws like three gates on, just dumps it all out right there inside <laughs> the road. I thought I saw got it from here. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, sir. We do. Did he end up down there somewhere? I, I heard you in the bushes down there somewhere. Oh, I had that switchback. I had to back up. Oh, seriously. So you must have come in from the second exit. Yeah, I don't. Can we get in that way? Yeah, you take, uh, you turn right at that Chevron onto yeah. Patrick's Point, and then you cut across Anderson, and we got two signs there to take you this way. Okay, because we, so weren't, we weren't sure, like, like someone, like, Colin was telling me, that, like, when you first turn off, like, Main Street or something. Uh -huh. Yeah, what you don't want to do is keep going past Anderson and have to get through that bridge because that's pretty skinny. I don't know if it'd be a problem with you because you don't have a trailer, but wait, wait, I don't know if that's a thing either. But what we're going to do is probably drive right down along all of here. Yeah. Probably drive on the outside here and then just back up and tailgate the footing. We just have weights over our strings so they don't get all tangled up. But I figured if we just drove in and nosed out there and then back then we'll just start at this end and work our way that way. Start at this end here. Yep. And we'll wet it up a bit so that it's yeah, not so it. hard to rake it around. I'll get it wet when I get back. Cool. That'll work. It's like all this excitement over a bunch of guys to watch tailgate, so. Hopefully he pours it stiff enough that we have to work real hard to move it around at least. So it's not too easy. Alex, did you grab rakes already? Higher. No. Yeah. It's right here. Oh, lower. It's right in line with the stinking rebar. Oh, brr. Here, I'll move oh, it. Oh my God, wait, 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 I can get it from here. Are you going to start there? Yeah. Okay. I figure we could just in between each one just, and just get it flat. Yeah. And oh, then yeah. I'll be on the other side of the wall so you guys don't have to. You'll be on that side? Yeah. Do you want to get your mug boots on? Huh? You want to get your mug boots on? Nah. Nah. What are you, are you gonna like try to stand there or are you gonna lay down? I'm probably <laughs> just gonna like crawl, lay down. Take a nap. Can you reach? Huh? Can you reach? Oh, what, no, well, I'm gonna stand on the wall back here. What if, what if you had the mini bull float and you were up there and you just reached down with that and I could try. I think that'd be cool. Cause I, I mean like, that's a, that's a reach. And no, then I was gonna, gonna stand on the ledge and just like kneel down on top of the floor board. Oh, yeah. I know I could do it from over there to this corner and then, oh, uh, yeah. I don't know, I'll try. That would be easier. Hey Joey. Yeah. I was thinking Gordon said he would, he would be on the backside. He would back Do hey. you have a specific plan for the bowl, for the mini bowl flow? No, I was, just I, was thinking, it. I was thinking him up on the top there with that might be pretty effective. Yeah, I think so. Give me some mud. 
hit this corner Ooh. first. Yeah, Tell him to back, slingshot back up a little bit more. Yeah. Give us a back? 12. Just be back a little bit more. Sorry. How many uh, little trickish dudes can you fit in one corner? <laughs> Couple more. Couple more. We can hire a couple and get them in here. Come on, camera guys. Get in here. Oh, yeah, baby. You probably want to turn that far. Probably want to what? What did you say? I was saying to turn that bar because it was touching the form. You want a shovel? <laughs> He's just wanting to schmoo out of this hole. Be all right. Keep on letting her schmoo. Yeah, it works. Kind of makes it feel powerful con controlling a whole it's concrete truck with one finger. <laughs> it's gonna become one with the wall. Estimating concrete is is an ongoing thing i'm sure for every contractor some are wonderful at it and some like me are not perfect at it so it's it's critical to make sure you have enough but at the same time you don't want to round up by three or four yards and pay for half a half a truck full of concrete uh, to just have them ship it back and make their own you know blocks out of it they have these big two foot by three foot or so or maybe four or five foot uh, blocks that they can you know build things out of and make retaining walls out of and if you don't have a use for the concrete, then they get to go make something cool out of it, and, and it, it is wasted money. So one of the things that we do is we have our own block like that. It's, it's just a, a building block, and there's a, a rubber stamp that you lay in the bottom, essentially. And if you have extra concrete, you fill it up, and it, and it's, it seems silly to some people because you can buy those blocks for less than the cost of a yard of concrete. But for me, if I know that my calculations are pretty accurate and I just want to round up for the sake of making sure that I'm not uh, waiting two hours for a truck that's got to drive from you know an hour 15 hour 20 minutes away uh, after being filled up so it takes a while to get there and instead I can just make sure I round up plenty enough and there's been quite a few times where your footings for example eat up more concrete than you expect and you think you overestimated by two yards to make sure that you have enough to do it and then to give yourself a block you know as an extra insurance policy and then you use up every drop of concrete whereas otherwise we, we would have just rounded it by one yard and thought it was enough so it's it's kind of our own little method for making sure that we, we have what we need there we typically buy concrete from a plant that's located in fortuna uh, however on this job we've, we've been using another company that's it's based out of arcada that's much closer and it's it's interesting because we're pretty relational we like to work with you know the same company a lot because you build that communication relationship and you build a trust and you get familiar with people and it's just it's, it's just easier to deal with the same company so it, it is a challenge to keep everyone happy but also not take unnecessary risks by uh, working with a company that's so far away that if you're a yard of concrete short like we've had happen on this job you're not waiting two hours for it and ending up with a big cold joint in it you can get one from right down the street so that's that's an interesting dynamic to work through
on the next episode of Viltrakis Design Build. Thank you.